Hello, Mad Cappers. We're here to make a fabulous rolled cuff toque. It's one of the first hats that we made when we started our company so many years ago. It's easy to make. It's a beginner sewer project. You can make it for him, for her. So let's get started by giving you the template for the top. You can get the link below in the description and, and you can print that template from our website. Uh, this is what a typical head block is shaped like. And you can tell from the oval that we know as Milners that we do not have round heads, especially looking down from the top. And our top of our head is also not flat. Just like the earth isn't flat, our heads aren't flat. So our secret has always been to find a way to give the top of a hat a bit of a curve. And that makes it so much easier to sew and it makes the fit so much nicer. So I'm going to cut out my main body piece, sort of like a headband, but it's gonna be a little bit bigger than my head size. And depending on your fleece, you may have to just check a piece to see how comfortable the fit will be. Fleece is all different. Some are stretchier than others. So for me, my head size is 22 and a half inches or 57 centimeters. And I'm cutting my piece out at 23 inches or about 58 and a half centimeters. So you're just going to play it by ear. I like the fit to be a little bit larger than my head size because there's a cuff on this hat and rolling up the cuff gives you four layers of cozy warmth in the winter. So we just need a little bit of extra room so that that hat doesn't feel too tight on our head. So we've made a dart in our top and we're going to sew that dart. And I'm going to use my basic seam width of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And then on the long edge of our hat body, I'm going to sew all the way down that seam about a quarter of an inch or say six millimeters from the edge. So fairly close to the edge. And then I'm going to fold it in two and I'm going to sew again. So I'm sewing that back seam still, but now I'm sewing through four layers and I've evened it up so that my raw edge will be the top. Just gonna pin it to hold it and I'll sew inside that seam. So using my regular seam width of three eighths of an inch or a centimeter, and I'm gonna sew that back seam now all the way down to the bottom and give it a back stitch. So taking out my pin, I'm gonna check and see where my center notch should be. And I only need to do it on one of the layers because I'll be able to see it when I'm sewing the top on. And I'm going to top stitch on my top piece so that that seam is finished on the inside and lies nice and flat. And the stitching will sort of disappear into the fleece. The fleece is nice because there's usually a velured side. So if you, depending on the color of thread you, that you use, you really won't notice that stitching too much, but do a nice, neat job. You go up one side, go into a point above the seam and then come back down on the other side. Now I'm gonna turn it right side out and I'll just peel off one of the layers and turn it right side out. So I have three layers on one side, one layer on the other. But when I turn it right side out, I have a perfectly folded hat piece. And you can see there that the seam is all off to one side, so we're not going to top stitch it. But it's not going to create any problems with that hat sort of stretching out of shape because all the way down there's a nice seam that's going to hold it firmly in place. So I'm going to give it some pinning and I'm going to just sew close to the edge all the way around the top of that piece about a quarter inch away from the edge or six millimeters and leaving it open like a tube all the way around and we're back on the sewing machine to show you just what i mean we're at the assembly stage now though folks and now I should say that this is really part one of this hat because I'm going to show you with the next video how you can really jazz this hat up. 
And I think you saw at the beginning, I was wearing this hat with a flower pin and I made that flower pin with just pieces of scrap fleece. So that's gonna be in the next video. And I'll show you some of our best selling hats that start with this hat and how you can make them too. So I'm pinning my notched area at the center front and my seam at the back. And I'm just gonna sew the top on with a regular uh, seam width of 3 eighths of an inch for me or one centimeter. And also I should note too that when you cut out our pattern piece, our top pattern piece, we've left a, a gray shaded area all the way around in case you happen to use a wider seam width as your normal width, like a half an inch. So you can cut outside that gray area to make your piece a little bit bigger. And I'm just going around and I'm not really pulling on it. It should fit pretty well from pin to pin. And if you have to pull on it to make it fit, then your um, body piece is probably too big or your top piece is too small. So maybe take it apart and try replacing the top piece by cutting one that's a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to turn it right side out and this is the trick. We're not going to use a serger to finish that inside seam. And you can see there's a curve on the top of my hat. It's, it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. And I'm going to just make a top stitching right up next to that seam that joins the top and the side together. And I'm going to sew inside on the side, just alongside the seam. And I'm sort of using the raw edge of that seam as a guide with the left part of my presser foot sort of up against it. It wants to sort of stand upright as I've got my hat um, working from the top looking down into the hat and I'm working on the wrong side. And my, my needle and my presser foot sort of want to help me along here. I'm pulling it out on both sides as I go. And you can see that it's a nice, neat stitch. And that is the secret, folks. That's what makes this hat seam lie so flat without a serger, without blocking, without anything except a couple of nice, well-placed stitches. And I'm just going to add a decorative top stitch at the bottom just to pull in the cuff a little bit. And I will use a seam width of about uh, only between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch or maybe two centimeters. And I'm just pinning it flat so that I make sure that I have it rolled nice at that edge there so that there's the same amount of hat on each side of the fold. And once I go all the way around, I'll just check and trim all of my extra threads. And there you go. All done. Now I'm going to show you on the hat block how well this shape works. So as you can see, I haven't done anything. I did not press this hat and it just fits on that block perfectly. And that's my secret sauce, folks, is just making sure that when I design patterns for heads, that I use my collection of hat blocks to make sure, and my own head, of course, too, to make sure that the hat looks as I want it to look. And that's with no ruffling seams or flaring seams or wonky seams. This is just a nice, great toque that you can wear under a coat hood or you can wear it on its own. You can wear it as a sleeping cap. If you have a friend that's going through hair loss, it makes a wonderful gift because it's warm and cozy. And if you want, you can trim away some of that raw edge at the top. Just be careful you don't cut into the seam. Or if you want to, you can finish that edge with a serge. And that's what we'll do next time. But until then, here's the hat. Voila. I'm pretty happy with it. I made one for my hubby too. And I'll just give you another peek of what we're going to do next. And I'm off to do the next video. And this little guy visited this morning.
Have a great time sewing. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye.